This is Greg Benz, and I'm happy to announce the launch of WebSharp Pro version 5, which now includes the ability to bulk export to multiple platforms at once, buttons for your favorite settings, integration with Lightroom and Capture One, support for multiple watermarks, the ability to save custom crops, and much more. WebSharp Pro offers much more than just sharpening, so it has settings to control every aspect of creating beautiful images for the web. And now in version 5, you can change multiple settings at the same time to work even more quickly. For example, when you're exporting to Instagram, maybe you just use these basic settings, but when you're exporting to your website, Maybe you choose a 16 by nine aspect ratio that's gonna be 1200 pixels wide. We could add a border. Maybe you wanna increase the amount of sharpening a little bit and add a watermark. Well, it'd be nice if you could change all those settings at once and now in version five, you can via the new save load settings interface. When we click here, what we'll see is that on the left-hand side are various presets I've created for myself to cover a range of different needs. Each one of these, when I load it, will update the preferences, for example, to work with Facebook in different ways or a square template. And on the right is where I go to create new presets. And we'll come back to this. Let's just take a look at a few of the options I've created for myself here. So with this Facebook blur border, if I go and load this, I'm updating all the settings at once. So I've got no watermark. I'm using the Facebook template with a border at 8% using blur and a drop shadow. So all the settings I would want for that purpose, all I have to do is click on sharpen and it's gonna export straight to my finder window here. So I've got that nice, beautiful blur border ready to go to Facebook. Let's try another. We'll go into settings to save load settings. Let's try this panel. It's a two by one panel with a GB watermark. We can load that and we'll see it's going to use the two by one aspect ratio, a little bit higher resolution. There's no border and it's adding this GB watermark to it. And again, I just click sharpen and immediately get a new output from the same image ready to go. And if you want to work even more quickly, you'll notice that the tooltip for settings says to hold down command or control and click to bypass the first screen and go directly to this interface. And then when you're here, you don't have to click on one and click load. We can simply go to the one we want and just double click it and it loads immediately. And then I can click sharpen. So I've got my full resolution that I've loaded here. I'm going to process and get my full resolution template here at high resolution with no sharpening. So all the settings that I wanted to use. And I could go command or control click again. Maybe this time we'll go and do a different version of Facebook with a black border and a white line. Go sharpen for that. So now we'll have the Facebook resolution again, but with a different border on this version of it. And if you want to get even faster, we can go command click, go back in here. Notice that there's this option to add the first three presets as buttons in the main panel. So right now there's no extra buttons in this panel, but if we turn on this option, now we get these buttons that correspond to the top three items in this list. So this IG is the first two letters of this IG Instagram basic template and FB is Facebook and W is my 1200 pixels wide with a full watermark. I'm gonna take out that W and it would be 1200. So this will now just simply say 12 to remind me that's what that one is. And if I ever get confused, the tooltip will tell me the full name of it as well as letting me know that I have the option to either sharpen with these settings or just load the settings. So if I go and click on the IG button, then I'm gonna get my Instagram export. It goes directly out with Instagram settings, but the panel stays in its current settings. Or I can option click and just load those settings. So if I option click Facebook, I get the Facebook settings and option click the 1200, I get that. Or if I just click the button, I can export with those settings. So very quick and easy to work with your favorite settings that way. And then if you wanna get even fancier, we can do multiple at the same time through the badge feature. Let's go delete these and try a new batch. So when we go click on batch, we'll see that I can choose any of the various presets I've created for myself, as well as the current settings, because these may not be saved in a preset. And I can run all of these that I check at the same time against either the current image or multiple, if I had multiple images open, or I can pick a bunch of images from the disk. So I could potentially process hundreds of images at once with multiple different versions. So let's go and let's do an Instagram, Facebook, 1200 pixels wide with a full watermark. Let's do those three versions. We'll process this current image and it will just automatically cycle through the different settings, export those different versions for us. And then when it's done, the settings just revert back to where we started. So there's nothing to do there. We just created the different versions that we wanted and we're ready to go. So obviously there's a lot of power behind these save settings. Let's take a look at how you can create your own. So let's say for example, we wanna create a 16 by nine template here or something like that. So let's go and create that. Or actually we'll do one for uh, the Vero social media. So you'd go and pick long edge, set it for 3000 pixels. That's typically what you'd use for Vero. I'm gonna leave it 100%. Let's go into our settings. I don't think I want a watermark. 
I do like this protect sky option to avoid sharpening any noise in the sky sometimes. I don't think I need any sort of border options for this. So I think all that looks good. Now I need to save it. So I go back into my save load settings area here. And here I just simply type in Vero and I'm going to click save current settings, but I first need to choose what I'm going to save. If I check all the boxes, then I'll save all the settings. And anytime I use this Vero template, I would overwrite all these settings. But let's say that maybe sometimes they use different amounts of sharpening. Well, if I uncheck this, then it'll load the Vero template, but it won't override whatever the panel has for the current amount of sharpening, and it'll just stay there, which can be nice and convenient if you only want to update certain categories like the overall size or the watermark. Once you choose that, we hit Save Current Settings, and you can see now we have this new template, and I want to move it up into position so it's one of my top three buttons. So now it's my third button, and I have a VE for my Vero export. And it's really just that easy. Now, if you have created a template and you want to update it, you've already seen how we can rename it, but you can actually change the settings in here as well. For example, if we go down to my full watermark lower right, if I click that, notice that it says this save setting overrides the watermark. So this template will only change my watermark. It won't change anything about the sharpening or the dimensions or the borders or any of that. It just includes this one category. And let's say I want to change which watermark I have here. Let's go about doing that. So the way I would change this, I want to load this so it's active and I'll work from that starting point. So I just head back to watermark and make the necessary changes. In this case, I'm going to move it to be a center placement and maybe knock back the opacity to like 90%. And so that's all I want to change. I'm going to go click on save load settings, make sure I've selected that same template that I want to update and you would click update, but don't click it right away without checking what you're saving. Remember this only has the watermark settings and that's all I want to put into it. So I need to uncheck the other categories and I'll update with just the watermark. And now that's remembered. And I'll use that placement and opacity to the watermark. So that's a quick overview of save and load settings in part one. In part two of this video series, we'll take a look at the integration with Lightroom and Capture One.